if you have some data, either some text, some slicers, things on your report page that are taking up extra space. You need them on that page, but you don't always need them visible. Well, I'm going to show you how you can put those on a pop-up window in your Power BI report. So they're still present on the page, still usable, but out of sight when you don't need them. I'm Allison Gonzalez. We're going to hop over into Power BI, and I'm going to show you how you can easily get this accomplished. Before we get to the video, I just want to let you know, if you are interested in more in-depth Power BI training, head on over to prague.work slash Allison40, and that's going to give you 40% off an annual subscription to our on-demand learning platform where you have access to hundreds of different classes. Now on to the video. I'm going to show you two different pop-ups. Both are incredibly easy to make. The first pop-up that we are going to go over is a text pop-up, right? Maybe you have a report and you want an explanation or you just need more information about what's happening on the page, maybe instructions for your end user to know how to operate the report, what they should be looking for, all that good stuff. Well, in that case, it is very handy, right? You don't want to take up space on your actual report page for that, but you still want it to be easily identifiable. So over here, tied to this nice information button, I have a little pop-up, right? This report is using AdventureWorks data. So I have a little blurb about that, even have a link to learn more about that information. And then I have a little spot to close that on there. So you have that information, it's easily accessible, but again, it's not taking up space on your report page. They can easily see the information they need, close that, and boom, it is out of sight, but still there if they need it. The next pop-up I'm gonna show you how to build is going to be for slicers, right? We have a lot of information on our page. We have a lot of data. We don't want to cram slicers on here as well and take up some real estate that we want to use for our visuals, but we still want to have the ability to filter down our data. So in that case, we are able to have a pop-up for the slicers. We can choose what we want to filter that by, whether that is both slicers, just one of the slicers, what have you. Again, and this is what I'm going to show you because it's a little bit tricky and a little bit different because when I hit close, I want this to retain that change. And that is where a lot of people get stuck when they attempt that, but it's really simple. So we're going to dive into the Power BI desktop and I'm going to show you how you're able to build both of these slicers. So we're over here now in the Power BI desktop. First, we're going to look at the text pop-up. Now, the key to building these pop-ups is knowing how to build bookmarks. If you know how to do bookmarks in the Power BI desktop, you will have no problem building pop-ups because that's all that you're doing, right? So let's go ahead now, go click on your view ribbon, and then we are going to add two additional panes here. We're going to add our bookmark pane as well as our selection pane. Now notice as we add those panes in, those will pop up over on the right side of your screen. If you have on object turned on, you may see it look a little bit different. I have my own object off. So if you have one object on, you will still have both of those panes, just depending on the behavior that you have in your on object settings, you might need to play with that a little bit to get both of these to come out. So we can see right here in our selection pane, all of the different things that are on our page. Notice that we have three of the elements on this page are hidden. Let's take a look now at our bookmark pane. These first two bookmarks are on this page for my text pop-up. The next two are for my slicer pop-up. So we're gonna take a look at the two bookmarks I've made for my text pop-up. So when I click on that text pop-up on, it's gonna come up. Notice when we have the text pop-up on, these three are now visible. When I click to text pop-up off, they are hidden and they go away. So that is really the key here and that is just the magic behind the scenes of making a pop-up. All you need to do is simply add in the elements that you want for your pop-up set a bookmark with those elements present, and then hide those elements and set another bookmark for those elements to turn off. 
The last and final piece of setting this process up is in tying those bookmarks to buttons, right? So we have to have a button to turn our pop-up on, and then we need a button to turn our pop-up off. So I chose the info button. You'll notice in your insert ribbon, you have a variety of predefined buttons, right? Definitely make use of these, save yourself some time. But if you feel that one of the predefined buttons isn't what you would like, it's not um, as descriptive, or maybe you just want something a little bit different, you are able to bring in your own images, your own buttons that you would like instead to do that. So for this one, I just use the information button. And you can see with that button selected, we now have a format button pane. The very last option is your action. And here in our action, all we need to do is set that button to be a bookmark and tie it to the bookmark that we would like. So now we have set our on pop-up. We need to also consider, hey, how do I get rid of this, right? How do I see the data behind it now? We have to tie the text pop-up off to something. So a lot of times I'll use an X, I'll import like an image of an X button and I'll put that up in the corner and use that. You are also able to very easily use a text button. So I use this blank button here. I wrote in the word close and then I tied the action of this button to my off pop-up. So that is our process for building pop-ups. For my slicer pop-up, it is the exact same process. We can see our slicer pop-up on, and then we have our slicer pop-up off. We can see it turns it on. We can see everything is unhidden, and then the off has everything that is tied to that slicer is off. The key difference that we did not change for our text pop-up that we did have to do for the slicer pop-up to make sure that that is still visible is when you set that, all you need to do is come down to the data to turn it off. So we're gonna now make a pop-up together. Again, so simple, your few steps that you have to do is just add all of the elements that will be tied to that pop-up window. You will then take the bookmark with all of those elements present on the screen you will then go hide all of the elements related to the pop-up, take another bookmark, and then final step is tie those bookmarks to buttons. So I brought over a new page and we are gonna build a new pop-up together. So we're gonna come over on our insert ribbon, we're gonna come over to our buttons, and for this one, we can choose any one of these. So if you're following along, Definitely you can pick any one of these, or if you want to do a text button like I'm gonna do, we can go with blank. Now you'll see it always pops up over in the top left corner. We wanna move that over to our kind of blank space over here on the right side of the top pane here. And here in our format button, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the text. So you can go ahead in that format button section to see your different settings. I can see I can choose different shapes and we have so many shape options, right? Maybe you don't want it to be a rectangle. Maybe you want it to be an oval or maybe you want to have a speech bubble icon. Change it. You've got tons and tons of options here. And this again is a really good alternative to having to import your own image instead. Depending on your shape, you may also have some even other cool options to really tweak this and make it look exactly the way you need to. Even my little tail icon or tail angle here, I can adjust. We're able to rotate the button, which will rotate everything. We can rotate just the shape. And then if we have text in there, we can rotate just the text. In your style, here's where you're gonna enter the text for your button. So we'll turn that on. I'm just gonna label mine info. And as soon as you type that in, you will see the text get added into your button. You can play around adding in different font sizes, styles, colors of both the text. And then scrolling down, you have your icon options, and then you have your fill. So I'm gonna turn my fill on. 
and I'm going to change this color from white and I'm going to pick one of the blues that are in my color palette. Notice you're like, that color doesn't really match. And that's because our transparency is down to 50%. So I'm going to move that up to zero. So that way it's that full color. And now that we've added that, I'm going to scroll right back on up to my text. I'm going to change that font color to white. Now that we've added that in, the next step is to add in what we want for our pop-up. So I'm going to now add in a shape. Generally, this is not necessary, but I like to generally give my pop-up a background just so it looks like all of the items on the pop-up are tied to something, gives them a little bit more of a sturdy look, a little bit more intentional. So I'm just going to go with a regular rectangle. And I'm going to move that over. This really can go anywhere that makes sense on your screen. I generally like to keep it somewhere nearish to the button so that way it seems tied together. And then here on the shape, one thing I generally will like to do is make this just a little bit transparent, just so you get a hint of what is behind that pop-up still available. We are then going to put any content on here, right? So if we were doing a text one, I could go with a text box. We have our fantastic text boxes, which are my least favorite things to deal with in Power BI Desktop. But we can kind of fit that into our space. And then I'll just put enter your text here. Notice again, you got your font sizes, types, bolding, centering, all those text options here. I'm gonna have that get a little bit smaller. Now remember, we have two options here. We have our text box and we have our shape, our present. And then let's also do a combo. Let's put our put a slicer on here. So I'm gonna grab a slicer from my visualization pane, pull that on over. Really size that a little bit to fit the space. And then I am going to bring over, let's just do a date slicer and we'll pull over the year. And I'm gonna change my slicer settings from between to let's do a drop down. All right, so we now have two elements on this pop-up page. We have some text and we have a slicer. So the final piece I'm gonna add is a button that will close this. So there's a few ways you could do this, whether you bring in like kind of like an X icon that you would stick in the corner, or if you don't feel like bringing in anything, you again can go with that blank button, pull that over from the top left, and kind of bring that to the bottom of your pop-up window. And then in your style section, turn your text on and hit close. I'm going to make this Again, stand out on my page a little bit better by bringing in the background fill so it stands out. All right, we have all of the elements that we need here present on our page. So the very first thing that we're going to do now that we have our pop-up created is to get a bookmark. So we're gonna go over to our bookmark pane and hit add. And my top tip when working with bookmarks, name it right away. You're going to forget once you've added a bunch of bookmarks, what's one, two, three, four, five, six, you know? So always name that right away. So this is going to be new pop up on. So I know when I come over here, that's on. Now your next step is to go to your selection pane and turn off or hide all of the elements that are tied to that pop up. So I hid those four elements. And now I'm going to take my final bookmark. I'm going to hit add and we're going to call this new pop up off. So we now have a pop up on and a pop up off, right? It is working and we just got to tie these together. However, because we have a slicer, notice I click the slicer. We'll put 2006. See everything behind me and my report is adjusting and working. However, when I click close or I click new pop-up off, look what happens. It reverts back, right? That's not the behavior that we want when we're using a slicer. So it's very easy to fix this. 
all you need to do is go to the ellipses button on the off bookmark and then you're going to come down to data and you're going to click right there you're going to deselect that because we do not want that data to be reset back to that blank point we want it to retain any changes we make so you're going to click to uncheck that now let's turn our pop-up on let's use the slicer Sometimes when you're in your build mode, you will kind of want to click around on your selection pane just because if you have stuff overlapping, it does get a little bit annoying. So I'm going to click again. Let's go with 2007 this time. And now when I do the off, it retains the filter. So it's very important when you are using slicers in your pop-up that you will turn that data off to ensure your changes are saved. Now, the final thing that we need to do with this is to tie those bookmarks to our buttons that way they're able to be used. For our info button, I have my info button selected in my format button pane. We're going to turn our action on. We're going to go down to our type. We want that to be bookmark. And we want the bookmark to be our new pop-up on. Then our pop-up off button is this close button. So with the close button selected, again, we'll turn our action on, set the type to bookmark, and then set our bookmark to new pop-up off. And there we go. You should now have, and you can do a control click to test this. So control click close, control click on. And you can go back and forth between those two and that's working. So I can in my bookmark pane and kind of investigate through. There it is with it on, with it off, with my slicer turned on, with my slicers turned off, and with our new one turned on and then off as well. So that is pop-ups in Power BI. They are so easy to accomplish. If you are able to make some bookmarks and set those to buttons, you are able to make a pop-up window. So let me know in the comments below if you've used this or if you are gonna go redesign all your reports to now have this feature in them. Definitely don't forget also like this video so you'll see more things related to Power BI popping up in your feed. And of course, subscribe to our channel here at Pragmatic Works. We're putting out videos normally three to four times a week about all the different topics on the Power Platform, and we would love for you to join us over here. Also, don't forget, if you want to learn more about Power BI, go a lot more in depth, head on over to our on-demand learning platform. You can use my code, Allison40, to get 40% off an annual membership.